Manchester United are officially up for sale. The Glazers went out of the club, and to be fair, Manchester United fans, they want the Glazers out also. And what they would love is somebody to come in and spend a bit of money to get them back where they belong. So today, we're placing one of the world's richest people in charge of Manchester United, and all hell breaks loose. <music> So for context, the person who has taken charge of Manchester United is none other than Elon Musk. He's made a lot of money and lost a lot of money along the way with Tesla and Twitter. Certainly an aggressive businessman. He's come on board with Manchester United. We've kept some of the chairmen, David Gill, Alex Ferguson, Bobby Charlton. Those boys are going nowhere. But if you look down that list, you can see in front, there are some legendary names, but there's not a single Glazier. The Glazers have gone and Elon Musk is going to put a lot of money into this club. We're going to make this database available to you over on the manager seat discord. There's a link down below. So if you want to have a bit of fun with Manchester United on Football Manager, come on board with this download and Elon Musk will just give you all the money in the world to buy lots of players. So we're going to go forward 10 seasons in intervals to see what he does, who he brings in and what sort of trophies he can bring back to the glory days of Manchester United. Let's jump forward to the end of season one to see what he's done. So season one is in the bag and Elon has already been a busy boy. First thing to take in from this page in front of you is the manager. Ten Hag has gone. Ten Hag went very early days, all the way back in November. He got rid of him and brought in another Dutchman, a Manchester United legend, Rude van Nistelrooy, who is actually a decent manager in Football Manager and the real world, to be fair. But this does worry me. Are we going to see a conveyor belt of managers across this 10 years? Let's keep an eye on this one because Van Nistelrooy has come in and the pressure is going to grow on him immediately. Another thing we're going to focus along the way is above my head. The facilities, 17 training, 18 youth facilities, junior coaching of 18 and youth recruitment of 19. I expect that to be 20s across the board because Elon is going to chuck money at them very much like Man City did when the new owners took over and they developed that fantastic training facility. Elon should be doing the same. But we're here to find out who he's brought in. I'm looking at the league position at the top and that's crap. Seventh in the Premier League in the first season. I'm not surprised that Tan Hag did get sacked. So they finished in seventh. There is one game left if you look at it. And they could potentially go as high as sixth. Or they could drop down to eighth. Maybe out of the European positions. God help them. Let's have a closer look at the other competitions they're involved with. Nothing of note in season one. Quarterfinal exit against Liverpool in the FA Cup. They went out the UA for conference to Villarreal. Disappointing overall. Nothing to write home about at all. The Carabao Cup, the quarterfinal went on penalties against Arsenal. Terrible. Should we see if they bought any interesting players in the first season? They spent £314 million. Incredible amount of money, but take into account that there's a few transfers there from the previous management. So Lissandra Martinez, Casemiro, Anthony, they've all been bought from the real world Ten Hag and of course Tom Huddlestone, superstar in the making. We're going to look for Mohamed Ali Ben Romdan all the way down. So not many big signings in the summer leading up to September, but in the January transfer window, they went big. They spent another £100 million. Mikel Marino came in for £39 million, a very good midfield that sit alongside Casemiro. I'd like that to be fair, Manchester United. That would work very well. £8 million on what is going to be one of the world superstars in the next 10 years. Andreas Scheldrup came in for pennies and he's already that good at the age of 18. And then they brought in a bit of a Rolls Royce player, to be fair. Benjamin Pavard, I rate this guy an awful lot. He's very good at right back, very good at centre back. Came in from Bayern München for £29 million. That's a bargain. And Florian Talvan, ex Newcastle United, for £22.5 million from Mexico. Strange he even went there, to be fair. And he's not really done much. Nine games across the whole season. So I would say that's a disappointing first season for Elon in season one. Let's jump to the end of season three to find out if Rude is still got his job and if they spent any more money. Well, 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 end of season three and it's pleasing that Rude still has his job. That is very impressive. As is the facilities. Well done, Elon, mate. You clearly dipped your hand in your pocket and we now have world-class facilities across the board. I move my head simply to look at the capacity of the stadium. 74, 8, 7, 9. We need to watch that. 10 years is a long time and really... If they're packing the stadium out week in, week out, that should be creeping up, shouldn't it? Before we look at the players, let's find out how they've done in the Premier League. We can see they're second, and wow, they've done very well. 83 points for Manchester City, 96 points have walked away with it, but that is an incredibly decent season from Manchester United. This is a cause in the year 2025. If we look at the season in between the one we've just seen, they finished fifth, and did they end up finishing seventh in the end? They did. They must have got a win in the last game of the season to go up to 59 points. The season after that, they improved a little bit to fifth, 
64 points, missing out in the Champions League. But after that, Bosch, second place, 83 points. And they lost a few games towards the end, to be fair, but they wouldn't have caught Manchester City. Now we see Manchester United kicking on with Champions League football. And that would really bring in a lot more superstars. Shall we find out who they've spent their money on? So the previous season, £259 million with £45 million going out. In terms of excess, there's no big ones. Dallow went out to buy him for £22 million after 34. That's a lot of money. And they got rid of a lot of defenders. Eric Bailly, Lindelof, Malassia, all for very small money in reality. McTominay's gone off to Fulham for pennies. Literally zero pennies. And Lissandra Martinez has gone on loan to Atletico Madrid and is now at Nice. Very strange. But the players they brought in were huge. Ruben Neves, finally a superstar midfielder for £93 million. Has come in and has clearly done well for them. 21 games this season, 7 assists. He's done okay. That is a brilliant signing for them. Alongside him, Nico Williams, a superstar of world football going forward. Out on the wing, I really like this boy. If they were to buy him in the real world, he'd be fantastic. And he's had a storming season. If you look at that, 16 goals and 9 assists. Definitely a player Manchester United should look at. And then they spent other massive money on a brilliant left back in Furla Mendy. Another brilliant player. Worldwide superstar. 50 games, he's just been Mr. Reliable. 7.07 .07 across 50 games is incredibly impressive. Not doing much in terms of assists, but obviously defending well along the way. And after that, Coates, who, to be fair, is a brilliant defender in Football Manager for £80 million pound as a you know, backup centre-back. That's not bad at all. And Jan Sommer, a goalkeeper, coming in for nothing. Again, a decent backup. Although I say backup, he's played... <laughs> Every single game. Well done, mate. They need to improve goalkeeper position. And then the third season transfers, another 240 million with 59 million pounds going out. Pavard has already gone for 56. Anthony went out for 8 million pounds. Oh, that's going to hurt. And we saw Lissandra Martinez go for 4 million pounds. Zero cost up front. What a waste of money. That was 80 and that was 60, I think it was. A lot of money down the drain. But in terms of players coming in, wow, 108 million pounds on Jeremy Doku, who's a very pacey striker. I'd imagine they're playing him up top at 23 games, 8 goals, 6.96 average. That's not exactly £108 million worth. And it's giving him the number 11, so maybe he is going to be an inverted winger stroke inside forward. After that, a brilliant sign-in. Pierre Kalulu from Milan, a great defender, can play across the back positions galore. He's decent on both feet. 46 games in all competition. Really good rating throughout. He would be a brilliant signer for Manchester United. Physically excellent as well. And then they went for an ex-Man City boy, Pedro Porro, who is a world-class right wing back in current real life world football. Of course, he was in Manchester City. I don't think he played a single game for them, I want to say. He did not. Went off to Sporting and Manchester United picked him up for decent money indeed. Then Arakovic from Red Star for 9.25. Plavsic for 61k. Pennies. And then SMS for free wow 30 years old but this is a world class midfield he's worth 78 to 235 million pounds this guy could be a superstar in his first season 46 games 13 goals 5 assists amazing this squad is developing nicely in terms of the past two seasons they've done okay in a few competitions they've won the Carabao Cup beating Liverpool in extra time Rashford with 2 and Fernandes with a 98th minute winner and the Conference League they got to the semi-final but knocked out to Leverkusen that is very disappointing and then the current season, they've got the Europa League proper semi-final, but sadly going out to Atletico Bilbao. In terms of any other cups, they went out in the semi-final. No, they did not. They got. They've won another Carabao Cup. We've got two trophies on the bounce. This is going well. We're second in the Premier League, Champions League football. Finally, we can get rid of all these competitions and spend some serious money. Okay, these two years, I think Elon was a little bit skint. Of course, after that season, spending £265 million on all those superstars, we went into the year 25-26 and they spent a measly £35 million. Angelo came in from Santos, who in the real world is again another superstar wonder kid, 22 years old, very good inside forward out on the left-hand side. And £40 million from Genk, from Mujahid Sadiq, who's a decent centre-back, six foot tall, could be a bit tall, he can play across the back, probably more suited as a right-back than an actual centre-back. And £28 million went out 
Joao Diallo, Luke Shaw went off to Atletico Madrid, what a move that is, and lots of other cannon fodder leaving. Harry Maguire going to AS Monaco, Van der Beek and Sampdoria, all these superstars finally leaving. And the current season, they spent £71 million on three players. The first one is Nicolas Sewell, a world class centre back, 31 years old now, 6 foot 5, still very good. Played 51 games in all competitions this season. Clearly a starting centre back and rightly so. After that, they spent £23 million on Emerson Royale, the current Spurs right back who went off to Atletico Madrid and Porto and clearly did that well that Manchester United decided to spend a lot of money on him. And he's played 10 games in all competitions. Not great. And Matthias Perrin, a goalkeeper, I want to call him. He is 34 years old now. He's not really played that much. Not a great signing at all. And they've actually made a decent amount of money here. £30 million for Alvaro Fernandez, the very good left back, went off to Newcastle. This guy is a decent kid for 24 years old. I'm surprised they sold him. And those new signings, were they going to do anything? The previous season, Manchester United was second. The one after that, they dropped a third, but still getting Champions League football. Not bad at all. Manchester City still walking away with that league. And the final one, Bith, they dropped down a bit. See, he's not spending money and he's dropping out. I think Elon is going to go big for the final five years. Manchester United's first run in the Champions League proper, they got to the round of 16, getting knocked out by Barcelona. Bit of a disappointing return there. Getting knocked out in the FA Cup semi-final penalties to Arsenal, absolutely heartbreaking. And a very early exit from the Carabao Cup, saw them walking away with Zilch this season. And the season after, even more heartbreak. Getting knocked out in the knockout playoffs to Inter Milan in the Champions League, going all the way to the final of the FA Cup and losing to Liverpool 3-1 disgusting and Liverpool also dropped them out of the Carabao Cup a very disappointing season and to be fair he's not spent much money at all if we look at the management Van Nistelrooy is still there this boy is doing well in terms of his performance do you remember the stats at the beginning these have improved massively people management 20 motivated 19 Rude becomes an incredible manager in this game the capacity of Old Trafford has not been touched and in terms of the facilities they're still at 2020 reputation has improved that dropped down to four stars when we started the save and now it's up to four and a half the key player is strangely still Jaden Sancho, who to be fair has had a brilliant season. If he had a season like that currently, that would go down very well. So finally, let's jump forward another five years now, so we're 10 years in the future to find out if they can finally get their hands on a decent trophy. I know the Carabao Cup is a trophy, but come on. Well, bloody hell, year 2032 and Rude is still in charge. That's the biggest shock of all to me. This boy has been at the club longer than most, to be fair. He's had 10 years as a manager, and he's not been sacked. So Elon and Rude clearly get along very well indeed. And he's still improved. What, what a guy this guy is. The stadium has not been touched, but the facilities are still fantastic. 20s all around. Let's look at the transfers first, and then we'll see the performances. So previously they spent £71 million on that cannon folder. After that, they spent £200 million, give or take a few quick. Mark Cucarella from Chelsea, David Rom from Spurs for £33 million. ECL from Everton, Francesc from Real Madrid, is he a region? He is, and a very good one at that. James Justin from PSG. God, this boy's got around a bit, hasn't he? For £18 million. Currently at Wolves. Vito Gabriel, Jan Encante. He's come from Chelsea for £9 million, but they immediately has retired. Kim Christian Hovenal. Some of these are going to be superstar regions. We'll have a look at some of them towards the end, but for now, it's pointless to click on all of them. Renato Sanchez, though. That is a good freebie. I say good. No, he's still decent, to be fair. Currently at Villarreal, so they obviously sold him in the interim. So with almost 200 pounds coming in, They've actually made more money. And look at this. Doku has gone to PSG for £183 million. And to be fair, is he worth that? Like, he got five goals and four assists in 33. He's done very well at PSG. But for Manchester United, they're going to be happy with that, surely. Rashford, a big move to Barcelona. He's currently at Atletico Madrid. How did he do? A couple of terrible seasons, to be fair. He's done decently at Atletico Madrid. But after all his time at Manchester United, moved off to the Spanish coast. Marino left, Nagasi left, and Varane went off to Benfica for pennies, and Casemiro's gone back to Brazil for free. Moving into the year 28-29, they spent £353 million. Big money. Jan Thielmann for £59 million. A really good player in Football Manager. 30, start of the game, obviously, is 20 years old. Decent player. They've not gone big on any one player, but they've spent a lot of money on very decent players. Fofana, £55 million. 
Van Burkhardt is a great pressing forward in the game. He's 31 years old now. Martin for 50 million. Meslier, the French Leeds goalkeeper in current world. He's a decent keeper, to be fair. They've gone big on some players. 76 million pounds going out. Any decent names there? David Rommel, they literally bought last season. And Hannibal has finally left to go to Sporting. Ah, oh, he doesn't look that good, does he? This guy can be very good at football manager. They've obviously not looked after him. Into the year 2930, another £230 million spent. Bernard Torrientes of £63 million. He's probably a very good regen. No, he's not. He's real. Well, I take it back, Bernard. Sorry, mate. You are good, though. And £77 million coming in, the majority for Angelo and Emerson Royale, who everybody loves buying, by all accounts. To be fair, the Raspadori, Pinto and Malik Thiao are very good signers indeed. Raspadori, in particular, is a very good player this season. And Malik Thiao is a brilliant centre-back. Physically, very quick indeed. And he's still at Manchester United, playing week in, week out. Moving into the year 30-31, just £115 million spent. The majority was on Federico Stella, who is a region, who is still at the club, who isn't playing that many games. Defensive midfielder, the age of 25. Bit of a waste of money there. And £143 million going out. The majority for Younes Moussa. We didn't even see him coming in, but he's obviously crept through the back door somewhere. Probably a free transfer. Um, all the way back there for £50 million. Well, I take that back, Younes, mate. We did not see you coming in. And Fofana, who they bought the season before, has also gone. Shelter up has finally gone. Did he have a good season at Manchester United? Because he was there for many a season. He did not. Wow. So much potential with this kid. And to be fair, Manchester United have ruined it. And then into the final season, they spent £137 million. Desiree Due, who is a decent central midfielder, starts the game all the way back down here for Ren. Really good Mazala, to be fair. He'd be cracking. Although, I shouldn't say they were cracking when he's fractured his skull. Sorry, Desiree. Michael Jacobs for £30 million is a very good regen. And £80 million on Francis Tiquite, who is another regen, a defensive midfielder. Not bad at all. £20 million going on through Emre Tezgel. I don't know if he's any good. So really, they've spent a lot of money. In total, one, seven, carry the three, minus ten, 1.949 billion pounds. Elon has spent a lot of money. That's a lot of Teslas. Jesus. But as we know, it's not all about money. It's about trophies. In the previous league, we finished off on, they finished fifth by an Aston Villa in the year 26-27. After that, they dropped to six. Oh, that's not good, is it? 75 points. That was very close finish, though, wasn't it? After that, up to post. They're back in the Champions League, which is good for them. They lost 10 games, which isn't great. And then pushing forward, they, oh, they dropped out again. They're just yo-yoing back and forth, aren't they? There's no stability here, but considering the money they're spending, they should be up there. Aston Villa, to be fair, flying. I'm moving into the penultimate year, the year 29-30-31. Oh, my God, we've got a bloody Champions Trophy. Manchester United have finally won the Premier League in the year 2030-2031. 79 points. They've drawn with Arsenal, but just about beat them in goal difference. That is incredible. And in the final season, they dropped down to second, losing to Liverpool on, on the last game of the season. They drew, and Liverpool won to go two points clear, and Manchester United would have won it on goal difference. That is absolutely torture information the last game of the season it was even an 83rd minute seven minutes away from picking up their second league title in a row they've lost it got it look at the other competitions of the year 27 28 nothing to write home about a semi-final of the champions league going on to man city bit of heartbreak there moving up to 28 29 nothing going out of the europa league a semi-final loss to norwich so close yet so far. They could have won a lot of trophies, but they've just fallen at the last hurdle. Juventus beat them in the round of 16 in the Champions League in the year 29-30. And the year that they won the league, oh, it was followed up by a lot of heartbreak. They lost to Arsenal in the Champions League final, and they lost to Arsenal in the FA Cup final on extra time. So close yet so far. And the season has just gone. Well, we've got one game left, and that is tomorrow against PSG in the Champions League final, which we're obviously going to sim forward one day to find out how they do. This is the year they've just drawn to Leicester to lose the league title to Liverpool, who they beat 2-0 just a week before. And now they go up against PSG tomorrow to see if they can lift their first Champions League final with Elon Musk in the crowd. Let's holiday forward to find out how they do. But before I do, 
if you are new to the channel by all means subscribe to the manager see we got lots of great content coming out if you do like this video hit the thumbs up and let's jump forward one day oh my god they've won it 3-0 they've beaten psg in the champions league final of the year 2031 32 and akimi got sent off in the first minute can you believe that jesus they were 3-0 up 2-0 up half time 3-0 up just after wow so there you have it 10 years of manchester united future stroke history elon musk has taken them to a league title to a champions league title to a couple of carabao cups he spent almost two billion pounds on superstars he's improved the facilities and now really you'd argue they're back where they belong elon bloody musk tesla twitter now manchester united i think he should just go and buy them right now and take them to glory there's something a bit different on the channel today with the experiment if this is your type of thing or you'd rather more of a deep dive video check this video out next which will satisfy your craving i'll see you soon